If you've ever wanted to turn your deer into a custom design, I'm going to show you how right now. All right, first things first, you're going to want some software that can create vector art. My choice has been Adobe Illustrator, although it's not exactly cheap. It'll cost you, it's a subscription. So it's gonna cost you about $21 plus taxes and fees uh, per month. Uh, you can find uh, free software. I've just, I've always used Illustrator. I think some others have, uh, have caught up in functionality and they're less expensive or free. I'm just used to Illustrator. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. Um, so that's the first thing you wanna do. Just Google Adobe Illustrator and uh, download it, sign up for a subscription, uh, or find some comparable software that'll do the same thing. All right, the second thing you're gonna want is a high resolution photo. If you have a photo that has pixelated edges around the antlers, you know, sometimes I get photos from, uh, from trail cameras they're usually not a very high resolution or they're taken at night so that I can work with some of them but they're they're not always they're usually not a very good resolution so if you can get something with good lighting where the person has used a, a camera that uh, you know it's either a professional camera or just a good cell phone with good lighting and you can see all of the details of the antlers like this one where if I zoom in you can see every line around the points that is what you want to be able to see. Um, pixelation will, you won't be able to trace it as closely and you'll lose some of that detail that you would really like to see in your final product. All right, so now that you have Adobe Illustrator and you've found a photo with high resolution, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over here to your uh, toolbar and you're gonna select the pen tool and Just the regular pen. There are a couple other options in here uh, But you're just gonna be selecting the regular pen tool and then zooming into your design Like so what I like to do is just force of habit no reason really I usually start on the base of the, the left beam from my perspective the left beam and just uh, start clicking. I usually draw uh, the first line uh, just like that and see how, how, how if there's a line there, um, what you're gonna see in just a moment is that I'm actually tracing with a fill and you can do that, but it, it gets, it's kind of hard to see where you're going and what your design is gonna look like. So I usually like to go over here and get rid of that fill. So I'll click this right here for no fill, and then I'll go, I'll select this layer here, this stroke, and then I will give it a stroke. So right over here, it's, it's defaulted to black, and I don't want that. I like tracing in white. Usually there's a dark color behind, uh, in, the, in the design or going against some dark antlers. Um, so except for in some sunny, bright situations, I like to use a white line to trace around so I'll go up here to the color palette and just select white. And then um, now you can see the line that you're tracing. Now, one thing to note, um, sometimes if the photo has lower resolution, when you zoom in um, and you start tracing, this line will actually be too wide. So what you'll wanna do is you'll go over to the stroke thickness um, tool and you'll just adjust the weight. So I often trace either with one point or I'll knock it down to something that uh, looks right for the resolution of the photo I'm working on. So I'll select something like, you know, let's see what 0.5 looks like. See, that line looks a lot thinner just to make it more of a stark difference. I'll drop it down to a quarter and you can see as I'm tracing then the line is much thinner to let you get in some extra detail that's often not necessary so for this design I would probably just stick with a one point width and just keep tracing around the antler so let's jump ahead to where we've traced this all out and we'll cover num point number four 
All right, so number three, that step that we just went through is the longest step of this entire process. You want to trace every line of this whole antler. Now, some people might be thinking, why can't I just automate this? Aren't there some trace features within Adobe Illustrator? And there are, and I've seen people start businesses like this, like trophy stickers, and use functionality like that. And some people are fine with those results. But uh, I really like to be true to the, the, the design. Um, if you just start trying to knock out a general shape, you're gonna end up with a, a rough silhouette of the whole antler. And in many situations, you're not going to get all of the points. You know, if somebody's holding this rack up in front of a bunch of trees, that coloration between the trees and, and the tines can they can sort of meld together in the design um, and I just don't like the result so for my personal preference um, I've always committed to doing the highest resolution design the most true to life design that I can possibly do for every one of my customers so I will hand trace every point in here individually so now that we've done that on this one side we're going to go over, we're going to select each of these pieces, one, and then I traced out these two tines as well, and go over and, and remove the stroke for the lines, and now we're going to fill. So you can see how the antlers just sort of pop and jump out of there. Um, so what I'll do at this stage, um, I will first of all, I'll trace out the other side, I'll do the same thing to the, the right side as I did to the left just now. I'm going to then drop the, the line thickness and fill the antlers so they look like this. And then I'm going to, uh, to start approaching the skull. Okay, so in the fifth step, what you're gonna do is you're going to trace the skull. Now, you don't have to do this every single time. A lot of times folks will send in deer from the exact same angle and you can reuse the skull. Um, especially if the if a lot of times they're already mounted deer so you can't see the skull. So in this situation, I'm actually going to trace out this skull because I really like how it looks. It looks really mean and aggressive. And so I'm gonna trace this skull out, uh, but you don't have to do that every single time. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. It is the exact same process as tracing out the antlers. It's just a lot more detail and it takes a lot longer. This entire design probably took me a total of, you know, an hour, hour and a half at least just to get the basic tracings done and get it to this next stage. So let's take care of that now. All right, now we've traced out the skull. We've got um, a lot of intricate lines here. And uh, what we're gonna do is back out the stroke again. We're going to, to remove the stroke thickness and, um, and then we're going to fill it. And this whole skull will sort of pop out and come to life. So boom, there we are. Um, and in one second, I'm gonna show you how that matches with the antlers above it. Um, and just pulls the whole design together. Step number six is backing up just a little bit and tracing a box. I like to put a box, a black box behind the antlers and in front of the image. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll select the rectangle tool right over here I'll select a layer that's in between the skull and the uh, um, and the image, and I'll just draw this black box in here. Change the color. There we go. All right, there's our skull. Next thing, let's just bring our antlers in. So now that we've got it on a, a black background, and we can sort of we can really see where all the lines are all the detail uh, between the contrast between the white and the black, you can see that some of these lines are not exactly parallel with each other. Uh, when I was tracing, I was a little bit farther away with the, with the lines right here, right? Between the points, um, it's a thicker black line. And then right here, 
it's a lot thinner black line. So what we're gonna do right now for this last step is to go in there, zoom in, and modify those lines so that we can, uh, so that everything looks uniform and it's gonna make the design, the whole design just look that much better. It's, this is the last 5% of the design, but it, it really, it, it improves it by, you know, 50%. It, this is the difference maker. All right, and that's your final design. At this stage, depending on the file type you need, you can just export it into that file type and send it off uh, to be engraved, printed, whatever. Um, but right now, if you enjoyed this video, let me know so I know if I should create more like it. Um, also, I've done a number of other videos where I actually show the entire process just really sped up on a number of other animals. So. Check those out, links are on the screen, and I'll see you next time, bye.